In the past week, Beijing kindergarten has been under public scrutiny. Red, yellow, blue, or RYB, one of the country's uh, biggest early education institutes, has been accused of child abuse. According to the latest police investigation, one of the 22-year-old teacher there had pricked children who resisted nap time with suing needles. She is being held in criminal detention. But the police also said that the claims by many parents that their children had been molested and drugged at the kindergarten were unsubstantiated. That is the words coming from the police. China's Ministry of Education has asked the schools nationwide to take effective measures to improve teaching standards while tightening supervision measures. Though this may be one isolated case, it does reflect how much more efforts are needed to improve child protection in China, no matter where the children are. For more on child protection, we are joining our Beijing studio, Gao Zhikai, who is a current affairs commentator in Washington, D.C. We have Christopher Chambers, a professor of journalism with Georgetown University. I want to welcome both of you gentlemen. Mr. Gao, this has been quite a thing here in China. If you look at social media, everybody is talking about it. Yes, indeed. I think uh, this latest development is very shocking to most people here in Beijing, as well as nationwide in China, mainly because protection of children is such an important matter, which has a bearing on most of the families here in China. And any news about child abuse, especially by a well-established uh, kindergarten institution, is shocking. And they demand the government take measures to launch a full and thorough investigation into the real situation and also take measures mm. to prevent such abuses from happening again in the future. Mm. Professor Chambers, we have heard, uh, not, I shouldn't say similar cases, but cases of severity of child abuse also in other countries as well. With the recent Boston Globe was a revelation of some of the uh, church deeds uh, also as an example. Investigation like this, what does it take? How much does it take for society to be able to really protect our children? The, the positive thing is, is that uh, the, you do have such pressure from parents and, um, either through directly through to their elected officials or through social media and traditional media such as television that can help bring pressure uh, on the institutions and on the police to really and prosecutors to do their job because you know th this is such a visceral emotional issue on many levels because you also have a situation where you have as in China as in the United States uh, families that have to work people have to go to work and they have to turn over their children to people that they can trust and y if the trust is broken down you have a fundamental piece of society that that, that is just not working so it, it behooves everyone um, in law enforcement prosecutors government industry mm. to work together to solve this so we have had some some very terrible situations uh, with religious uh, schools and, and daycare centers and kindergartens and with government uh, run uh, daycare centers in the United States and even in the in the capital city Washington DC where I am now it, we've had some terrible situations Mr. Gao now one of the things is to look at the, the further investigation of this case by the police and also by the government. The other thing, of course, is what are some of the institutional buildings that needs to be done in order to avoid any incidents like this from happening? Even this degree, as long as we adults are committed to the children, Mr. Gao. Yeah, first of all, I think as far as this particular situation is concerned, the uh, government and the law enforcement agent really need to demonstrate that they are committed to do a thorough investigation into the real situation. And this will be a big step in restoring public trust in the kindergarten system in China. Secondly, going forward, I think the educational system need to come up with higher standards and also enforce 
these standards in the kindergarten system. And I think efforts need to be made to avoid, for example, uh, putting the blame on one or two individual teachers rather than holding the institution itself responsible and accountable for the child abuse which may have taken place, mainly because the culpability should not be restricted just to one teacher or two teachers. Mm. The institutions themselves need to be held accountable for such child abuse right. wherever and whenever it happens. Well, it could be a kindergarten, it could be other entities, but many of these ones could be private as well. So there's another way of making sure that it would work, that is through capital, through the votes of shares and through the votes in the stock market. So uh, Mr. Chamber, Professor Chamber, looking at the history of you know cases related to child abuse, what are some of the most important tools the public and also the public institutions could have? I think the public um, must put pressure on these institutions to ensure that uh, that teachers and staff are adequately trained, are adequately screened, are 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 screened for personality disorders, are screened for criminal conduct. Mm. I think what you have found is is that many many times the people who are running these these uh, centers, kindergartens, schools, uh, they do fit what the government or private industry what they're standards are, um, but it, when you go below that level, you tend to find people who do not fit those standards, and they're because there's a lot of pressure to hire people because there's, there's many children that mm. must be watched. Um, that is where the breakdown occurs, not necessarily with the person running the place in terms of their qualifications, but the qualifications of the people below that person. And now, ironically, that also means that the person running the place has responsibility, total responsibility, for what happens below them. But we also have to make sure that there are qualified staff and subordinates, people below the people running the, the, these centers, mm. that are adequately paid, that are adequately screened, that have, uh, that have ed the educational level that, w that, that parents expect right. uh, when, when, they, when they give over their children to these people. Right. Uh, Mr. Gao, before we go, another point is how to teach the children who are very, very young in the age be able to, at least to a certain extent, protect themselves and be able to keep some space between them and others. That could be helpful, but it's very difficult because they're so young, Mr. Gao. Absolutely. I think professional training for the staff who need to take care of the kids, uh, normally one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, or up to six-year-old, is a very daunting task. Uh, people may take it for granted that any adult may be able to do that kind of job, but you really require professional training which involves a very tender caring for the kids, but also professional skills mm. to bring out the potentials of the kids and really uh, provide the best caring for the kids. Mm. And Thanks. I think uh, in this particular case in Beijing, I think uh, professional training is very much lacking in the staff mentioned uh, involved in the uh, alleged uh, child abuse. And I think this should serve as right. a warning sign for the regulatory bodies to beef up the professional training for the staff. Victor Galdrikai, Christopher Chambers, thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. And thank you for your love for the children as well. Thank you.